Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from EasyAutomation.com and welcome to section 8 of our test project course. And in this video we are talking about CI CD integration in test project with Jenkins. And this is a new plugin released like a couple of weeks before from test project team. Which is really really cool to see that now we can run CI CD test right from Jenkins freestyle as well as pipeline job using test project plugin. So this is one of the most community requested feature and we have been waiting for this to happen because this is one of the interesting feature even though test project by itself support a lot of test execution like scheduled test execution, manual trigger test execution. But this is one thing which is going to integrate right into your execution cycle that to Jenkins is one of the most popular CI CD platform which makes this feature more affordable with test project. So we need to have following prerequisite before starting to work with this plugin. The first thing is we need to have Jenkins itself and then we need to have the latest version of test project agent available within our machine. Let's quickly see everything in action and understand how things work. So for that I'm going to flip to my Chrome browser. Alright so as I said the working with Jenkins is going to be very very easy with test project because they have simplified a lot with the plugin itself. So the first thing we need to have is the Jenkins and I have already downloaded that in my machine. So I'm going to quickly open that and show you how it looks like. So I'm going to go to my downloads folder and then I'm going to run uh, the uh, Jenkins var file and because it's uh, because I have the latest version of Java within my machine I actually need to have the uh, feature flag enabled so this one I have to set so I'm just gonna do that as well enable feature flag and then I'm gonna hit enter so this will start the Jenkins for me over here and I'm gonna go to the Jenkins so the Jen for, for going to the Jenkins you have to just type uh, localhost colon 8080 which is going to be the port number, the default port number to go into the Jenkins. So this is going to be my username and password. And then I'm going to install the plugin. So that's the first thing that we need to do while working with the uh, test project plugin is the installation of the plugin using this manage Jenkins options. So you can go over here. Just ignore all these warnings as of now. We don't really have to worry about that. And then go to the manage plugins here and go to the available and then search for test project and you can see that we have a plugin this time from test project automation platform so I'm just going to install that without restarting it so it's going to install the plugin during the installation process I'll also log into my test project application portal so that I can then use some of the API keys and test project IDs job ID and things of that nature so these are the three important things that we require from the test project itself. So currently it's going to log in and at the same time you can see that the installation has been successfully completed. So I'm going to go back uh, to my dashboard and I'm going to go back again to the Jenkins here and now we have to configure the plugin to talk with our test project portal this one right. In order for talking with this particular portal all we have to do is we have to get our what is called as the API key. So if you go to the developers and if you go to the API, so this is the new thing that we have never discussed in our course yet. So this is one of the cool new UI options that you can use like the API and there is an API documentation as well. We are going to be discussing about that in our upcoming videos of this course. But as of now, just be informed that if you're going to use some of the API or if you're going to use a third party application like Jenkins to consume your test project then you need to create an API key so that you can have access to certain project for communicating with the third party apps. So here third party apps is nothing but our Jenkins. So we need to make our Jenkins to talk with the test project. So in order for that we need to create an API key. And again I have already created an API key over here so probably I'm going to remove this and create a new one. So create an API key and I'm going to give a name as uh, Jenkins. I'm going to hit next. So you can see that it's going to ask me the manage access. So it's going to ask me like which project that you need to give access to. So you can select like which project I'm going to give the access like exit automation test. This is the one which I'm going to choose and then I'm going to hit finish. So this way it is going to create an API key for me over here. 
So I'm just going to copy this uh, particular API key over here and then I'm going to go to the Jenkins and I'm going to go to the Manage plugin. Uh, sorry, uh, let me go back again to the Manage Jenkins and Configure System. And within this Configure System, we can copy paste this particular API key that we just generated. So you can go all the way here and you can see there is something called as test project. Do you see that? Uh, maybe I can just search test project. Yep, there you go. And this is the API key that I'm going to paste over here. And then I'm going to save it. That's it. That way it is going to create a connection between my local Jenkins with the test project portal. And also my t test project agent is currently running that you can see over here. So that's important as well. And the next thing to do is I'm going to create the project. That's it. That's very super simple option. So we already made the connectivity with the test project and now the project creation is going to happen. So I'm going to call this as maybe test project demo and I'm going to hit OK. Uh, let me select the uh, freestyle for now, not the pipeline. I'm going to hit OK. You can come all the way down here in the build step. You can see there's an option called run test project job. So you can select that. So once you select that, you'll see that there are three options coming in. Again, these things are very, very easy to see that configuration itself is very easy to use as well. As you can see, the project ID cannot be empty and the job ID cannot be empty. So this is the two mandatory fields that we need to fill in over here. So for doing that, as you can see the project ID, if you go to the test project over here, I go to the home, you can see that we have projects, right? So basically, to get the project ID from here, all you have to do is just click these three little dots over here. You get an ID here. So this is a new option, guys. This was not there before. It's available right now. So I'm just going to copy this ID. So this is my project ID, basically. I'm going to paste it over here. So it's going to be unique for each and every project that you're going to have. And then we end up here with all our list of tests and the jobs that you can see. So the next thing that we require is the job ID. So for the job ID, you can see that we have this particular uh, job ID is listed here. So that's what we actually require for our uh, test to be executed. So if I go to the test project's job ID, you can see there is a three buttons, uh, three dots here. So if I click that, you get the job ID as well. So I can just copy this. You can see that the ID has been copied coming into the clipboard. So I'm just gonna paste it over here. And that becomes uh, our end of all the configuration that we actually require. So I actually changed the wait time to finish from 30 seconds to like 1800 uh, according to the documentation, which is a good practice, I guess. So I'm just going to uh, take that and I'm going to hit apply and I'm going to save that. So that's bring the end of our configuration that we actually require to perform. Right. And then I'm just going to quickly open the test project agent as well, because we have to execute that. As you can see within our jobs, we have selected this uh, agent for this particular job as the test agent Mac OS, which is nothing but my current uh, Mac operating system. So I'm just going to open the test agent so that you can see that particular uh, uh, test agent coming up for me. So I'm just going to hit this uh, build now option right now. So you can see that currently it is starting to uh, build this particular uh, test for us. And you can see that our browser has been launched, which is really, really cool. And then it is going to run all the test for us. So it has opened the browser and is waiting for the browser to load. And then it is entering the username and password. And then it's going to perform all the rest of operation. That's it, guys. This is how we can easily run a test using test project plugin of Jenkins. And then we can run the test within our operating systems and again as you can see that within our test we have agent selected as the test agent as Mac operating system so if you have this particular job configured to run in different operating system let's say if it is in Windows operating system or maybe it is located within your Hyper-V machines that I have listed in here you can run that particular test as well I mean if that machine is up and running then you can 
just select that particular job and then you can start running that as well but if your test is running test agent whose machine is completely disconnected or something like that you probably cannot run that particular test the reason is because you should have that particular machine up and running if not the test is going to fail so for instance if i change this particular uh, let me see if that particular test has been successfully completed it seems like the test is still uh, running here so once the test is complete you can see that if i go to this particular uh, test project and if i hit edit and then if I, for instance, if I change the uh, the agent from test agent Mac OS to Windows operating system, and then once you run the test, instantly the test will start failing and you will see the error saying the agent is currently not available or something like that. So you will see all that verbose information of failure as well within uh, your test log, which is gonna happen. So uh, let me see what's gonna happen here. Let me wait for the test to complete first. There you go. The test has got failed, which is fine. The reason is because the Safari browser is currently uh, not supported by the test while I was recording it, which is fine. So now if I just go to the console output and you can see that the test has got finished and it also shows us a cool reporting link here, which is pretty, pretty interesting. The reason is because the reporting was something you have to go from uh, from this particular reporting tab and then you have to select the project and then you have to go all the way down but with that particular link what happens is you will be directly ending up to the particular report that the test has got executed over here as you can see the chrome execution has been successfully completed like 100 percentage whereas for safari browser the test has got failed which is fine and you can of course see the reason for the failures and all those stuffs from here right so this is how we can execute a test using the Jenkins plugin available for the test project. It's very, very easy and simple. And once again, to show you a demo very quickly on the test agent. So if I just go over here and if I change uh, the test agent from the test agent Mac OS to maybe Windows operating systems agent, which is currently turned off. And if I hit next and you can see it shows me all the browser. Uh, it was there during uh, the recording and now I'm just gonna save that and now if I just go back here to the uh, console and if I go back to my project and now if I hit build now what happens is instantly the test is gonna fail over here and now if I go to the console output it shows that unable to trigger the test project job to the agent and it says that it's currently in disconnected state and only when in ideal state it can be used for execution and aborting the execution so it's very super fast that it quickly knows that the agent is currently turned off and the reason is because as you know that in the test project if you go to the agents it shows us like what are the different agents which is currently uh, up and running and this is like a web service call like an api call it, sh it does within the test project uh, portal and knows like what are the agents which is currently up and running so whichever is disconnected it quickly knows that and it shows us within this particular jenkins plugin over here so that's it guys this is how we can execute uh, a very super simple test from jenkins plugin and once again thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day